Tom. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Very thanks, good. Thanks good for to having, see you again. Thanks for having us here today. We want to talk about SunAmp and our thermal stores. Uh, SunAmp was formed in 2005. Uh, we, our CEO was concerned about climate change, and he realized that to decarbonize, we're going to have to electrify, and that's going to require storage. Uh, a lot of people were working in the electrical storage field, so he decided to work in the thermal storage field. A lot of advantages of storing energy thermally, especially if you're going to use it for thermal outputs, hot water, heating, cooling, uses about 40% of the energy that comes off the grid. Uh, our thermal stores are significantly cheaper than electrical stores. They're made from sustainable supply chains. Uh, they're non-toxic and non-flammable. So we take advantage of phase change materials for our thermal stores, our thermal batteries. This is full of a phase change salt material. Again, uh, that salt is actually listed by the FDA for human consumption, so non-toxic, 100% recyclable. Uh, phase change materials allows us to take advantage of uh, uh, latent energy, which means uh, latent energy can sub store substantially more energy than sensible energy. And that allows us to store tremendous amounts of energy in a very compact way. Uh, this unit can be charged thermally from the CHP here. As the CHP is creating electricity, it's creating hot water. That hot water can be stored in here for use at a later time for a shower or domestic heating. Uh, this can also be charged electrically and that will allow us to take advantage of renewable electric or uh, off-peak electric. Yeah, so as we look at this for people that don't know where we are, what we're talking about. So we're right now in the facility with Blue Water Energy and what they're doing is they're doing a pilot. So they have the micro CHP unit that you are leaning on right now. So that unit is currently running. We can hear it quietly purring away in the background. And so it's producing about one and a half kilowatts of energy. And the byproduct of that is hot water that is being stored inside of this sunny. You mentioned about the capacity of this, and I think it's really important to point out that if we were to do the same thermal storage in water, you're talking a significantly larger storage meter. You're talking a tank that is this tall, a significant circumference. So the ability to store energy in this phase change media is best illustrated by its tiny size. Right, this is equivalent to 300 liters. And over here we have a 170 liter, and you can see it's actually only stores half the amount of energy, yet it's still bigger than the Thermino or the Unique 12. Yeah, so the ability for this to store energy, and if you look at it from an exergy standpoint, not so much the energy standpoint, if we were to try to do this with electrical batteries, or if we were going to try to do it just with storing water, with electrical we're talking way more cost for the batteries, and from the standpoint of storing the energy as water, you're talking about a lot more water. You're looking at massive tanks that you're, need to be stored in this You're room. looking at massive so, tanks. Correct. As we look at this unit, you know, why don't we take the top off yeah. of it, just so, so we can sort of get unit, a look at it. As we mentioned, can be stored, uh, charged thermally or electrically. Mm -hmm. So it contains two high power heat exchangers, one for charging and one for discharging. And they take up about 40% of the volume of this battery. So what we can see here is very well insulated. Our heat losses on this are less than half of a what a heat loss is on a tank. And that's due to the nature of the phase change material and the vacuum insulate panels that we surround the phase change material in. So we, here we have what we call our cell. It's a red polypropylene box and inside of that is our heat exchanger and our phase change material. So again, our phase change material in a liquid form here it is in a hand warmer. You can see it's not very hot. We just start the nucleation process and it's gonna change into a solid. That's a phase change. Now it's getting quite hot here, feel that Mike. Yeah, so when you look at it, you can see it's a liquid, it's becoming a solid. You can just see as I squeeze it, you can see that it's become a solid. Now, one of the things we want to note about this is that there is an IP on this technology. It's, it's not a hand warmer. We're using that analogy That's so people correct. understand it. They have a particular patent on the chemicals that they use that control this because this is not a one and done. Maybe just walk us through the understanding of like, this is so, going to be done many, many times, thousands of times. This can be recycled. Uh, phase change material salt hydrates have been around a long time. The problem was that they weren't very recyclable. Eventually, they would start to break down and stratify. Sunamp was able to find a way to stabilize the reaction between a liquid and a solid. And we have had 
this tested independently for 10,000 cycles. Uh, we have an A plus rating on that. I think we're the only company uh, that has been tested independently and has an A rating. We've tested it in-house for over 40,000 cycles. So if we were to figure two cycles a day of heating it and discharging it and charging it and discharging it, that would be over 50 years. Yeah, so if you look at that, when we say that, a lot of people might go, what do you mean by two cycles a day? The idea of this is if we were using an off-peak charging standpoint, we don't want people to think of this like they would their heat pump, for example, that might run 15 times a day. This isn't gonna do that. We might charge this off-peak overnight, we might charge it off of some other system, but it's not coming on and off. The other thing is if you look at that 40,000 cycle and you went, well, what if it ran eight times a year? You're still talking 16 years of operation out of this, this guarantee that you guys have already done the testing to see. Yeah. Uh, we think this will be the last thermal store you ever buy. Yeah, so what I can tell you is my, my gas furnace won't last 16 years. No. <laughs> right? No, so. we, we, usable life should be anywhere between 25 and 30 years or longer. Uh, we will warranty it for 10 years. Um, so from a technology standpoint, this is very new into North America. So this product originates from Scotland. Yes. And you guys are currently, now you've got operations based out of New York, am I correct? Correct. So we've opened up our New York office, but yes, we do produce these in Scotland at the moment. The company was formed in Scotland. Uh, I think one of the uh, business models in Scotland is to utilize this with an air to water heat pump to take advantage of renewable electricity or off-peak electricity and then use that energy to produce domestic hot water and heating for the building. Right, and so you know where my interest comes because we've talked a few times about this cool technology. I have an air to water in my house and what I like about this technology is I'm currently charging a large volume of water to act as my thermal battery, but you and I both know the limitations of that. I can drain all the energy I've stored in that tank in a very small window, whereas with something like this, this unit itself is capable of storing 47,000 BTUs. I can charge this with my heat pump off peak and even if I can only use it for three or four hours, which is about the usable time for this unit, it still means that for four hours that I was taking care of my house, I was doing it with energy that I basically purchased at a much lower cost. Correct. You have shifted that peak or yeah. shifted that high cost consumption. Now here what they're doing, there's obviously they're using a micro CHP, which is really cool. The micro CHP runs in a byproduct, the engine running, we're dumping energy into this, but you could also use this for other applications, right? There's a lot of other green and renewable applications where this technology could be used. Do you have some interesting examples of where this is being used in, in different applications? So we have a model in New Hampshire for a couple that lives off grid and they use solar PV to charge their model. Uh, here you see that we have a 2.8 kilowatt heater in the bottom embedded within the PCM that will get hot and melt the PCM. So they use theirs when the sun's shining to create hot water and store it. Uh, it could also be used, they have a wood fired furnace that they like to be able to operate once a week so they're not out there feeding the fire every 10 minutes. They use that wood furnace, they charge up all their thermal batteries, that stores all their heat, and depending on how cold it is, that may last them all week. Yeah, there's a lot of options this is going to be used for. The, the thing that interests me the most is the ability to apply it to a lot of different renewable technologies, but what I like about it is the simplicity. Right, it's, it's, it's got IP, so you guys are protected from the standpoint of what you've developed, but it's a, a very simple system that's quite cutting edge, and the ability to apply it into applications is pretty much limitless. It comes down to what can we dream up from the standpoint of doing this. The other thing that's worth noting is that you guys are also have units where you're not just storing heated energy. You can use these for chilled water applications as well, can you not? We have many different types of PCMs. PCMs will be temperature specific at the temperature which it can store the most energy. But we have cold PCMs that can be used for cooling uh, applications or even very cold ones that can be used for refrigeration, for food and frozen products. And then we have very hot ones that can be used to store energy to produce steam at a later time. Yeah, so you guys really do have products that work for high temperature, the more moderate heating temperatures, and also for those chilled water applications where you can really get into some creative stuff. Right, and as you mentioned before, they're able to work with many different other products to uh, accept inputs. So from an installation standpoint, it's pretty simple. Do you want to walk us through like sure. what is actually involved in installing this unit? For, so for this model, we have the two heat exchangers. They're very high power heat exchangers and actually 
can act as a plate exchanger. Uh, so if you're charging and discharging at the same time, you can keep that uh, at a continuum as long as you stay within a certain flow rate. So here we have our charging circuit. Oh, that's getting quite hot from the CHP. Yeah, so the micro CHP has been running for a few hours while Tom and I have been here. So what it's doing is the rejection heat from the micro CHP is going into this. and It's getting hot enough. We don't want to really leave our hand on it anymore. So you see here we have four Tektite elbows. These can be spinned for different configurations and they can be uh, uh, tied in through either the sides or the back. So what you're saying is in this case, the way they piped in is the connections are going out the back. We could have actually spun these and gone out from the That's left hand side. What about the side towards you? Do we have you come could come way? out here as well. We have it set up so you can go out every side except the front. So from an installer standpoint, what I like about this is somebody who's done install work in the past is sometimes you'll put this into the mechanical room that looks more like a closet and you're not faced with the, do I order a left hand return or a right hand return? This unit is universal. You don't have to worry about where your connections come in. Just spin the elbow and push the pipe in. That's, that's smart. Hook that's up our thinking. ground and we have a controller here for the electrical. Uh, so that wire just goes down into the heater and this receives inputs and will tell the unit when to charge electrically. And then the other two connections, just walk us through what the other two water So this is our discharge here. So we have our A and D and our B and C and this is all explained in the manual. Uh, so we will charge it through the BC circuit and discharge it through the AD circuit. Now in this case, we're going over uh, and we're doing domestic, right? We have a mixing valve so that we're not going to be burning anybody uh, from the standpoint of what we're putting out from this. So is this appliance approved as a potable device as well as a heating device? Yes, we have an NF certification for potable water and we have a UL approval for a thermal store. So that's great. And, and so these units all come that way. It's not anything special when you order it to say it's a potable application. They are all the same. They're all applied that way. They are all the same. That's good because that means you could get into situations where you're using them for potable. You might be using them for heating. It's uh, pretty ingenious. And you can run glycol through them or water or really any solution with the copper heat exchanger. So size wise, from a capacity standpoint, this one's around 47,000. Do you have units that are smaller than that? So we have, we like to uh, describe them as uh, water equivalents. So this would be a 300 liter equivalent or an 80 gallon equivalent. And then we have them down 60, 40, and 20. The footprint stays the same, 14 and a half inches by 22 inches. So they just, just get, get a little shorter. shorter. Right. And then what would be the biggest units that you guys would make? Uh, so we, we even have designs for making thermal stores in shipping containers where yeah. we could store millions of BTUs for commercial or industrial applications. And what would be a prime application for the big commercial units? Where would you guys see that being? Uh, well, we could see it being used where you have renewable energy that you want to store for some type of manufacturing process, possibly cement, where mm -hmm. we're storing at a very high temperature or even uh, creating a high pressure steam to drive a turbine to create electricity. Hmm. Well, that's really interesting. I appreciate you coming on camera. Thanks for having me. Talking about it.